New revelations show the National Security Agency's surveillance program violated its own privacy rules. The Post reported that the NSA has overstepped its authority thousands of times each year since Congress expanded the agency's scope and power in 2008. The NSA pushed back, saying the breaches were unintentional and, for the most part, minuscule. Joining me now via Skype is Bart Gelman, Washington Post contributor and senior fellow at the Century Foundation. Thank you so much, uh, Bart, for being here. We're going to go first uh, to President Obama. Earlier this month, he commented on the NSA surveillance program at a press conference. Let's take a listen. Uh, what you're not reading about is the government actually abusing these programs and uh, you know, listening in on people's phone calls or inappropriately reading people's emails. What you're hearing about is the prospect that these could be abused. Bart, what do you make of what the president said there? The president, like a lot of people who work for him, has a very narrow definition of two key words in that passage. One is abuse and the other is inappropriately. Uh, as, as the government depicts it, and this is, this is language it's using that it does not, frankly, explain. Uh, abuse, the only kind of abuse that exists would be if, uh, say, an NSA employee were to stalk his ex-wife or spy on movie stars or, or something of that nature. If they are uh, performing the mission that the NSA wants them to perform uh, and nevertheless uh, overstep their legal authority, uh, make unauthorized uh, interceptions or searches, or retentions or sharing of secret information, uh, that is not abuse, that's a mistake. Okay, and what did you find in your reporting? The, the sort of mistakes they were making and, and the reason for the mistakes? Well, let me, let me just start with the biggest picture here, which is uh, that, that you, you get a portrait of the NSA as a flawed organization, like any organization, that, is, that, that, that does the wrong thing uh, on a fairly, high number of occasions every year. The, what what we ha you see is a very strong contrast to the picture that has been painted by the administration, by the intelligence community, of thick layers of a oversight and safeguards sufficient to guarantee uh, that, uh, th that, you're, that they're not going to overstep their bounds. And they also portray a, a degree of oversight by Congress uh, and by the courts that simply doesn't exist. And they have said uh, that if you take a, a look at the entire picture, these uh, mistakes that turned up in these audits, something like or overstepping their authority, uh, you know, over 2,000 times, you know, in, in the context uh, is 20 million or so searches a month. Right. Look, if you are evaluating an employee and uh, based on error rates, then getting something on the order of uh, 0.01 or 001 uh, percent mistakes would look pretty good. For most citizens, the number that matters is the absolute value. It's a little bit, you know, to take a not perfect example, like uh, checking your bags on an airline flight. Let's say there's a billion passenger flights a year and they only lose 1%, uh, that's 10 million. Uh, losing 10 million bags is a big deal, even if they have a 99% success rate. Uh, and Especially the other when piece, it's your yeah. bag, right? Right, it's your bag, and yeah. it's your privacy, and it's, and it's your information that has been unlawfully or, uh, uh, or collected or collected without legal authority, at least. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's not all, you know, sort of trivial human error. Which is, but which is one excuse they have given, that it's trivial human error. What are, what are the reasons for these errors? Some of them, I, I, you know, you, you say it like one in ten is typographical. Yeah, one in ten of the human-caused uh, sort of infractions are typos. I mean, you know, they can literally be sort of, you know, fat fingered search terms uh, or clicking the wrong button into one database when you mean to cl click into another. Uh, nevertheless, information is collected. If, if uh, in those cases, uh, it is, the information is usually removed from the database, but not always. Uh, they can ask a supervisor uh, for permission to keep it and share it if it turns up valuable intelligence as they see it or, or evidence of a crime and so on. Uh, there, and, and by the way, most of the, most of the collection on U.S. persons, which is um, Americans and green card holders and U.S. companies, does not come from mistakes like that. 
it comes from what they call incidental collection, and that's a thing they almost never talk about in public. Uh, it comes when they are targeting a legitimate foreign target, even if they know they'll pick up lots of American content in the process, and the American stuff comes in uh, just as the inevitable result of targeting the foreigner. In those cases, they get to keep it all. Uh, they typically store it with the names masked, uh, but it is routinely possible to unmask the names when distributing the information. And there's also a technological problem that possibly can't be overcome, at least not yet, which is that uh, this technology, even though it can sweep up vast amounts of information, it can't determine whether a fo foreign mobile phone has actually entered the United States. Yeah, the biggest class of technological mistakes comes from that. They actually, for some reason, only get quarterly reports of where a GSM mobile phone is in the world. Now. Uh, this this is a uh, and so you know you're 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 uh, monitoring a foreigner using a telephone in China. Right. Uh, the person you know flies to San Francisco, and you're still monitoring. That's against the law under under FISA without a specific warrant. But they only find out every three months where the phone is, and they find out sooner if someone says you know here I am down at the uh, you know at the waterfront in San Francisco, and they say oops now. This is also, nevertheless, a reflection of the, a, a systemic issue and a reflection of priorities. It is not beyond the capability of the NSA uh, to know where in the world a phone is lighting up. Right. Uh, I mean, you know, the, <laughs> the phone company certainly knows. Yeah. Uh, and the uh, NSA has a pretty good window on that. If it wanted to spend the resources and priorities to synchronize those systems, uh, it's hard to believe uh, it could not do so. But there are other kinds of technical issues. Uh, that, you know, in general, uh, they give greater weight to collection than to protection of uh, information that they should not be collecting. Otherwise, they could adjust the filters, uh, so to speak. Uh, you know, so it, they're immensely complex systems, right. but there are safeguards that could be built into them, the, right. the automated collection that, that are not being built in. Talking to uh, Barton Gelman about uh, the NSA say, uh, surveillance program and an audit that found thousands of uh, security breaches, is it your sense that we would be here talking about this were it not for Edward Snowden? Well, clearly we would not. I yeah. mean, even after the immense number of revelations that have already taken place since early June, the president came out and uh, as everyone else speaking for the administration has come out, and talked about the safeguards that make it, you know, next to impossible uh, to uh, to collect information that they're not supposed to collect. Now they're using a sort of a private form of words that focuses on what their their own assessment is of abuse. Well, I would give you another example. The the president uh, or the administration twice a year releases a report to Congress that has statistical information on what they call compliance incidents. Congress gets the whole thing, although very few people are capable are, are are allowed to read it in practice. Uh, but when it has been released under freedom of information laws, you get a headline on top that says statistics on compliance incidents, and every single thing below that is blacked out. They won't give you you know, any information, is it bigger than a bread box, no numbers whatsoever. So only when the statistics come out can you even begin to address what's going on. And so Obama, in that same speech that we, or press conference that we showed a clip from, he has promised more safeguards, more oversight, uh, more transparency, and that he would outline a legal uh, justification. Uh, is, is that going to help? Is it your sense that that will address the, the issues that you've uh, uncovered here in this audit? Well, I mean, the first steps of transparency uh, have been uh, a lengthy defense legally uh, of the grounds of collection of every single American's uh, phone records. Uh, and whereas earlier uh, the president expressed a willingness, uh, and so did the uh, NSA head, to uh, change that program to add privacy protections, this new document, uh, released under transparency, uh, takes a pretty aggressive stance about why it's necessary and completely legal. So in some respects, that transparency was a step backward in terms of policy reform. Now, uh, Chris Van Hollen, he has recently uh, suggested a, a citizen's advocate uh, to safeguard Americans' privacy. Here is what he had to say. Right now, you have to have a reasonable suspicion that that phone number was involved in terrorist activity. My concern is, NSA can reach that judgment unilaterally. They do not have to get advance notice from the FISA court. So I propose that before they do any kind of query, any kind of search, 
They have to go to the FISA court. And at that step in the process, we also have what's considered a uh, citizen's advocate uh, to take the adversarial position before the FISA court. Uh, so you have that give and take. You, you, you said in, in some of these instances that the FISA court didn't even know about some of the procedures that were in place uh, until, you know, months after they had actually been going on. Uh, so would the, the kind of steps that uh, Chris Van Hollen is outlining there actually make a difference? Well, there, there are two issues uh, what, before the FISA court. Right. One, one is that by nature these are, are uh, ex parte proceedings. That is to say, only the government is represented uh, and everything that goes on there is a highly classified secret. Uh, and Obama has expressed some willingness in what he calls appropriate circumstances to have a, uh, a party representing uh, a potentially opposing point of view, a party, a, a, a lawyer whose job would be to test the government's arguments and evidence. Uh, it's unclear how routine the administration is prepared to have that happen. The other issue is whether the FISA court uh, has the means independently to assess the government's compliance with its orders. Okay. And the chief judge of that court, speaking uh, for the first time ever in public, told the Washington Post's Carol Lenig uh, that he does not have that ability, that he relies entirely on the government to report its own mistakes. Only then will he delve into them as best he can. Uh, and look for assurances that those mistakes are being fixed. Uh, and, and so the idea that the FISA court is exercising in fully independent oversight uh, just, just isn't the case. And likewise, Congress finds out what the administration wants to tell it. The right. audit report that I obtained and published in the Washington Post goes into a substantially greater level of detail than anything released to Congress. And I want to ask you this, and this is sort of a personal question, do you fear, uh, fear for your own privacy and, and even safety? Here you are taking on uh, the NSA, you were a little, uh, we couldn't find you uh, over the, the couple of uh, hours this morning and we were sort of like, I hope he's okay. What's your sense of that? Are you, are you feeling fine and, and safe and like your, your privacy is, is secure? Well, so I, I, I have no reason to think and don't sit around worrying about my physical uh, safety. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you, know, you yeah, Mr. Going... Mr. Snowden is under investigation yeah. uh, for alleged crimes, and the, and the basis for those crimes includes his contacts with me, so I imagine yeah. I am subject to a greater level of scrutiny than I was before. Right, right. All righty. Thank you so much for chatting with us today, Barton. Take care. Thanks for having me.